Welcome back to Lake Lot Build. My name is John, and today we are going to work on plumbing. What I wanted to go over with you is the items that I have completed first. And so let's go here to this vanity and I'll show you how I put in the PEX piping and the sanitary sewer line in the ICF wall. So let's go over here and take a look. Okay, so let's get down here. So the PEX piping that I just cho that I chose, I was talking with the guy, and this is leftover PEX piping that's a half inch that went that is for our radiant floor heating. Now I asked the guys at the um, plumbing supply store, and I said I have a big roll left over. Instead of me buying the blue and the red for the hot and the cold, can I use this? under the slab PEX piping. And he said, yeah, absolutely. In, in fact, evidently this stuff is actually um, a little bit higher quality because it's meant to be in concrete. And he's like, it's really, really good. So it was here, it was left over when we did the concrete. So that's what I'm using. So the way I did it was I have my trunk lines and we'll go down and I'll show you which are three quarter inch. And I did a trunk line for the full length of the house and then I'm breaking off my half inchers for each one of the different supplies for shower, vanity, toilet, things like that. So let's go over how I did that and we'll zoom in here. I used the, oops, sorry about that. I used the clamps and then the fittings. And so I made right angles here because I only have the two and a half inch instead of like a three and a half inch in a regular stud wall that you might be able to make that nice turn they make little connectors for that. But for this point, I made, I put the right angle here and then I have the clamp here that clamps the PEX piping to the wall. And I also use the Tapcon screws to screw it in. And so that way it is, it stays right there. And then that is the cold. I started each one of mine with the cold line first terminate it, complete it, and then go to the hot. That way I don't get the uh, switch up on a hot and cold line. And I did that for each one of them. Sanitary sewer is typical sanitary sewer. And the way I did it was you simply cut it out, cut my channels out. This is an actual vent pipe that goes up, over, and through the roof right there. And so you can simply see how I did that. And of course, this is for the drain line for my vanity. This is a half, one and a half inch pipe. And the one and a half inch pipe, even with the fittings, fits smooth against the wall. So the drywall can go exactly right over it. Now, if you go up a size to the two inch, the pipe will fit, but the actual fittings stick out just a little bit. So for say my drain line for my um, washer and dryer, it's a two inch drain line. And so that wall is actually furred out and we'll go downstairs now and check that out. Um, let's see, I have my sanitary sewer line right there for my toilet, which I should probably put some tape on that because I don't want all my little, all that junk to fit in there. And I have some in there, so I'm gonna have to get my vacuum cleaner because I don't want to send that down to the septic system when it gets hooked up because that stuff is not biodegradable. So I'm gonna vacuum that out and uh, make sure that I don't that didn't get sent down the system. So okay, I'm now in the basement here, and uh, let's start with the trunk line, which is a three-quarter inch PEX pipe. And so I have them right here. And so you can see the hot and cold. And I have my branch lines. Let's go to one. Very good, there we can see it. And so you can see the branch lines. Here's one we can actually see where I've marked the hot and the cold. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever used PEX piping, but I'm telling you what, this stuff is so, I don't want to say easy because you still have to do your layouts and things like that, but it goes together very quickly. 
and the thought that I don't have to use an open flame in here around the wood uh, with the copper piping and all that um, is just it's really nice. So let's go into the shower. Now the shower, if you can remember, for my sanitary line, it just poked out. And you can see that from our previous episodes. So what I did was I cut the pipe back, put in my P-trap right there, and then I measured, and I don't know if you can still see my lines, so you can see my lines that I drew for the center of the shower. And so then I was able to center that pipe this way and this way. And of course that's the drain that'll go on that. So let's go over to, uh, so here's where like say my valve, my thermostatic mixing valve for the shower will come in right here. And I have that in the car. So if I can get all these done, I'll come back and set my valve and block that in and then of course bring my pipe up for for the shower head so let's go here sir let's say like the vanity so we'll do a get the whole thing in here so of course we have the toilet and i also have the water supply for that and that all comes up over and that goes to my trunk line Over here is where the water line splits because I have a double vanity, which is one is right there and one right there. Now, I only have one input right now for my, uh, for my vanity. And the way that works is the two drains for the sinks come together and then they will go into the wall. So I only have one. Um, and that is an Ikea cabinet and it all comes, you, all the pieces come together so that it makes it just one connection. Over here, I will show you, gosh, and this one was hard. I have this toilet, of course, that's where we were just upstairs. Comes through the wall, makes the turn. I gotta catch the other pipe, which is the sink. Go through all of this, right, which is all load bearing. Make my turn here, come down, get inside of my web uh, for my joist there make the turn oops sorry make the turn here a little bit of an angle turn get it in the wall come down catch the sink uh, for the kitchen come on down and then go into the four inch pipe and so that is where i have my main vent because i'm using a three inch pipe but once i get into here i'll have the four inch pipe and so then the four inch pipe goes all the way out. Now I've made it all the way to the master bedroom. And this is where I have that concrete wall. So where I'm now is at the vanity here. And so I've started my, my cold and my hot and my cold and my hot. And so I've made my loops and then this is where I'm gonna put my T and that's where I will start with this guy here for my T, which will go into that. So let's go over the actual fittings now. It's probably a really good idea. So what I have is I'm going to do a half inch supply coming in and it's going to tee off. And so what I did when I went to my plumbing supply store, and this is just from my old engineering days, I made myself my own plumbing schematic. I started here, and this is where the water comes into the house, and that's a three-quarter inch line. And that three-quarter inch line is that one right there. So then I'll come over, tee off, and then that's where I have my hot water heater. So then I'll have a cold line, which goes all the way, and it'll go through my hot water heater, and then I'll have the hot line. And so then I have each one of my hot and colds, hot and colds, and I did my circles, uh, and that's for my T's, so how many T's I needed, and then of course, you know, there's a T there, and there's a T there, and so then I could count up how many T's. I went ahead and labeled all of my lines, um, which just goes back to um, my engineering days. But what it did is I took this piece of paper to my plumbing supply store. And the guy was like, wow, this is great, this is awesome. So within, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes, he came back with this box, and in the box, go over here by the light, 
I have all my pieces. And so anything from the three quarter inch uh, ball valve, which is where the water comes in, and so to um, my trunk lines, which is a three quarter inch trunk with a half inch T off of it, to my half inch uh, elbows. These are three quarter inch that goes into the hot water heater. And um, I think there's two of them there. There's the other one. So you got one going in, one coming out. I'm telling you, if you can take 20 minutes and do it this way, if you don't have a set of drawings that have that this has been created, which is the, um, the plumbing schematic, it will save you so much time. So right now, let's get back to work and I'll show you how uh, the water line goes in. So I have a little trick for you here. So these are the holders. Hopefully you can, that'll work. These are the holders for the PEX piping. I'm gonna show you here. It is made for a half inch. I don't know if I can get it in there very well. It's made for a half inch, but this little piece here that you can see, you can take that piece out and you can also use it for three quarter. And so the uh, the plumbing supply place was like, yeah, you just take a pair of, uh, I don't know, a pair of pliers and you twist and it pops out. I can tell you I tried that and I ruined like two of them. And I was like, well, this is a little bit harder than it looks. So what I figured out over, I tried two or three different ways. What I figured out is that there is a little dot if I can zoom in enough, there's a little dot and it's right there. If I take my chisel, because on the other side, of course, there's no dot, it's just smooth. But if you put the chisel on that dot and pop that through, then it pops it through perfect and it makes for the three quarter inch lines. So, bear with me here, I'm gonna try one and see if I can show you how it works. I know it's dark in here. And uh, so let's see if I can get that. Okay, so what I have is the little dot right here. And so it makes for a half. So the reason I did that is that I have the one bag of them. It'll do half inch lines and three quarter inch lines versus buying two different bags. So what I did is I take my smallest little chisel and I put it on there right on that dot and that is how that works I don't know if you can see it but it's all smooth now so now when I do my trunk lines I can pull out of the same bag if you uh, you don't need to buy a bag of three-quarter inch or a bag of what um, half inch just buy these that have both of them in it works real well so little tip for you i am now complete with the uh water line rough in so we'll go over a couple of the last few pieces on that uh the sanitary sewer so we'll have the um, toilet how do you do the toilets into the concrete um and then some of the other little pieces so let's go through these real quick over here, I'm going to have my big shower. I'm going to have one valve, but it'll run two shower heads. Instead of two shower valves, I decided, well, we'll just use one and we'll have it come on both sides. So, pretty simple. Water, hot and cold comes in, goes up, tees off. I have one for a shower head there. Goes along the Fox block. Here, I went ahead and put an elbow in just because that is a really tight right angle. So I put an elbow in back there just to make sure that it fits just fine. And then my other one 
shower head that goes in there. And I connected that um, the piece right there into the concrete, just like I showed you earlier. And that is just drill and tap my tap cons right into the concrete. And she is super, super tight. I made them a little bit taller because I'm taller and I like my shower heads a little bit taller. So nothing worse than having to duck under the shower head. So the next one here is the toilet. And so the toilet for the flange, uh, pretty easy. You know, I was going to, at first I was going to film it, but I was like, well, it's really pretty standard plumbing. You know, the pipe stuck up here. So you cut the pipe off and then that slides down in there and uh, I'm going to put some tape over it. So really not a lot to show you on that. Um, I have the washer and dryer hooked up so we can show you the pieces for the washer and dryer and my lines here. Um, that is the water line for the toilet. I'm going to come across here and go through the ceiling. Back to my trunk line that is up here. And uh, it's looking really, really good. So let's go take a look at the clean out real quick. Sorry, I have tools everywhere in here right now. The wind's been blowing, so I've been working inside. So I talked to my wife about maybe buying one of the more expensive, like commercial grade, like a Zern that has the brass top or something. She's like, no, because there's actually a rug that's going here. We can just get by with, with this kind of clean out, which is just a standard PVC style. And so what I'll probably do is I'll probably just get some brown and I'll just paint the top of this brown just in case that rug's moved. We'll go back and I'll do the um, that colored caulking that you use for tile. I have some at the house that is in a brown color. So I'll caulk around that just to make it look prettier. Over there is another toilet, of course. Um, I cut the pipe and did the exact same things there. Okay, so now you've seen how to do plumbing, which is the rough end plumbing uh, for the water lines and the sewer lines. So that is it for this episode. I wanted to thank you guys for watching. Make sure and like and subscribe. So we got a lot more stuff coming along here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.